exercise during the cruise. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your company? Well, I, uh, I started my company over 30 years ago. And uh, I'm, I guess I was maybe one of the only video enthusiasts at the time. And uh, I, I remember as a kid reading about a big screen television in Popular Science Magazine. It was a, uh, I was a huge do-it-yourselfer. I built my own go-kart, built a number of different things myself, and I wanted to build a, a big screen television. I, I, I tried a number of different things. One of, one of the things that I tried that did not work was taking a standard television and using an overhead projector, which is opaque projector, to try to pick up the, the image and project it onto the, onto the wall. Now, I, had a, I was fortunate uh, that I, I did not have a technical degree. Uh, and I think it worked in my best interest because I, I never had a chance to say that won't work. I didn't know any better. So I tried a number of different things. And uh, what I ended up with was a, an opaque projector lens on the front of a 13-inch television. And I made three different types. A cone type, which hangs from the ceiling. Uh, another type that was uh, on the floor with a mirror in it so you did not have to reverse the sweeps to uh, turn the, the television around. And a third model, which you probably know because I got that patented. And that was, if you've ever seen the type of television that's an armoire where the door has been up and a drawer on the bottom with the mirror where the projector goes into the mirror and back onto the screen, uh, that, was, that was my first uh, patent. And... Uh, I sold those plans through Popular Mechanics, Popular Science, to uh, to all these do-it-yourselfers for fourteen dollars and ninety-five cents. And then, <laughs> if they wanted to buy the lens, the mirror, or the screen, the screen in those days was a Kodak Ektolite screen, the curved silver screen. Yes, I know about that one. And uh, uh, I started selling quite a few of these things mail order, and basically the business evolved from that. I went from uh, the one tube to three tube projectors later on. I was using a, 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 a projector called Projection Systems Inc. out of New Jersey. And I was using Schmidt Optics. And my business took off in a couple of different areas. Uh, I was part of the sports bar uh, scene when that thing took off. Uh, I had the majority of the business in it. Um, I had some other businesses that I don't like to talk about. One of them starts with an X. And, oh, uh, and, and that and that was and that was but there was a lot of business in, in there my my heart was always in home theater and I always wanted to get these things into the homes but people weren't buying them for their homes uh, in certainly not in any numbers uh, every company who was in the projection television business in those days advent and then later on close no they always went out of business because there wasn't enough uh, there wasn't enough business in the home to support it uh, so I sold to anybody that I could sell projection televisions to, and most of it was commercial in those days. The sports bar thing was interesting because, in all, over a period that spanned 15 to 20 years at that time, I have 700 installations that I was involved with personally. 700 wow. installations. Do the math. That's, that's a lot that's of a lot thing. of installs. Uh, I did very little audio. Thank God, because I, I don't know much about audio. Uh, I'll, and and most, of, most of the installations that I use, even this today, I believe this to be true, that mono in a commercial establishment is better than stereo. That's my opinion, because at least you get full sound instead of splitting the sound up and never getting the proper imaging in a, in a bar or a restaurant. Or, uh, so I used, I, I used a very simple uh, audio system in those days. Uh, was an interesting thing. Uh, as much as I pushed home theater, I even trademarked it in California, trademarked the name of home theater. What was the secret ingredient for the home theater to take off? With, was, it's amazing because no change in video at that time. The video was the same that it was a year before. The quality was about the same. Few improvements with uh, uh, I, I designed a corner convergence because the convergence used to go off into the corners so we came up with four zones to, to, to do corner convergence and put all the junk into the right hand corner and then clean it up red, green and blue in the, in the right hand corner so there was some improvements dynamic focus was another but the big thing 
with these very little improvements, what was the thing that made home theater take off? It was surround sound. When the marriage of audio and video took place in the mid-80s, all of a sudden, it took off. The home theater thing t took off. By, not, by 1990, it was sailing. The creation of Cedia at, at that time. Uh, I remember bringing a line doubler and a data projector to Cedia. And I, I followed one of the, one of one of the companies that I uh, thought really did a good job at marketing, and I always believed in showing technical superiority. Even if I wasn't planning on selling that product, I wanted to show it so that it showed what we were capable of doing. So I brought a line doubled data projector, and I sold it for fifteen thousand dollars. At the time, my most expensive projector was five thousand dollars. I had no plans on really selling $15,000 projectors. I wanted to use that technical superiority in order to sell $5,000 projectors. And what happened was, at that first Cedia, people were lined up to buy the $15,000 projector. I was shocked. So I really never planned on being in the high-end video business. I never looked at myself as a high-end video business. I looked at myself only as an enthusiast. And I was making money at my, at my hobby. And, uh, and I enjoyed it, and I liked doing it. Now all of a sudden, people are lining up and asking, do you have better, more expensive projectors, even in the $15,000 deal? I was shocked. I, I thought I was living a dream at the time. And what happened after that is the, it was, it was necessary, it was mandatory that the video quality actually had to improve because the market was demanding it for the first time in, in, in the homes. I remember at, the, at that first uh, Cedia show, also Joe Kane came to, that, came to that show, and he lit everybody up with what should be the right way to do things, and, and uh, I, I actually met Joe at that show, became friendlier with him at CES not too long after that Cedia show, and then we we worked together for many years, uh, uh, and I tried to do what Joe uh, asked of us to be able to improve the improve the, the video. But, but I think what happened is we we got led into that end of the market, into the custom market, and then we had to be very careful who we sold to, how we protected those people because they had. They had uh, a job to do, and they had um, they had to be responsible and accountable to the end user in order to have a Runko dealership. So, if you see the steps where it came from, from the garage, putting these things together, selling them to to other people to build their own sets, to then getting into the three tube, then escalating into the home theater business when surround sound came around, and then boom, boom, boom. I guess the rest is history because. Here we are now with uh, digital projectors and, and uh, uh, CRTs had a great, great life with, uh, with, with Run Go. But I have to admit, uh, after 30 years, I'm, I'm happy to have digital projectors now.